What up, YouTube? And this is Steven, and I have an interesting article that I would like to share with you guys. All right, so I was on AroundJapan.com, and I ran across this article that I thought was really interesting, and I had no idea even about this whole subject matter even. The title of the article is Vice Explores How Sailor Moon Changed the Lives of LGBT Kids in the 90s. And I was like, how did that happen? You know? <clears throat> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through this article. It's a short article. I'm going to read through it, and afterwards I'm going to give you my, you know, my rundown of the LGBT characters in the Sailor Moon series. All right, so here we go. The article is pretty short and straight to the point. All right, so here we go. Sailor Moon is one of the most popular manga and anime series in the world. That is true. Even though it reached across the world and touched several different kinds of people, it was especially meaningful for LGBT youth due to its sympathetic portrayal of queer characters. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's see, for youth that didn't have role models to look up to as they dealt with bullying while in the closet, Sailor Moon provided a solace. Vice spoke to some of these now adult 90s kids about what Sailor Moon means to them. And they have a video of this um, on YouTube, so you can um, you know, definitely um, search for it and find it on YouTube if you're interested. You know, Vice and Sailor Moon LGBT kids. LGBT. LGBT kids. <clears throat> All right, so that is pretty much the article. And I was surprised to um, even see an article like this, um, just because I know, like in the '90s, like censorship was extremely heavy, and usually, like all the LGBT folks, like in Sailor Moon, in the English language um, Canadian dub, is Canadian dub. People always blame the dub the deep dub on Americans, but Canadians did that, not Americans, you know. Granted, Americans do ruin some things, a lot of things, but Sailor Moon was not one of them. <clears throat> Blame it on the Canadians. All right, um, so yeah, where was I? All right, censorship. All right, Sailor Moon was censored um, because that was what you did back in the 90s and even still now. <clears throat> They censor, censored a lot of the relationships that the LGBT characters had in the series. Um, and so I'm a bit surprised of how they were able to kind of like, how LGBT kids of the 90s were able to kind of like, you know, see that. But I guess maybe they were able to kind of sense it. Maybe like, you know, for example, between Amara and Michelle, maybe. <clears throat> Like, okay, hmm, this doesn't seem like it's quite right. You know, cousins don't really behave like this typically, you know, etc. <clears throat> All right, so let me get my rundown of each LGBT character, and I'll go season by season. Um, so I'll start with season one. All right, season one, we had um, Zoisite and Malachite, a.k.a. in the Japanese version, uh, I think Zoisite and Kunsite. All right, so they were a couple in the anime series, but in the manga, they were not a couple. Um, and back in the 90s when I watched it, I always assumed that Zoisite was a female um, because of the voice, because it was voiced by a female character. And that's how they were, that's how they delivered it. So that's how I believed it. But then when I read that Zoisite was a male, then I'm like, well, I guess it does kind of make sense a couple of things if you really think about it, you know, as far as, like, the, like, lack of cleavage and, you know, Zoisite wearing kind of like a masculine clothing. But, um, yeah, I didn't even know that Zoisite was a dude um, until, like, much later, <clears throat> you know. And many of the dubs, versions of the dub. Um, they dub Zoisite into a female. I know the Latin American Spanish version dubs Zoisite into a female, but in the Spanish, um, you know, the Spanish version for Spain, you know, the Castilian Spanish version, Zoisite remains a male, but Zoisite is um, 
they changed the relationship of zoisite and malachite and they turned it into like them being nephew and uncle so zoisite is the nephew and malachite is the uncle I think that was kind of like an interesting way to kind of keep the same gender, but also kind of like um, not be too controversial. So I think I thought I thought that was a pretty interesting take on it. <clears throat> but yeah, um, from <clears throat> excuse me, from what I heard, um, yeah, they're a couple in the anime. In the manga, they don't really have much of a, like they don't have a like a romantic slash sexual relationship with each other with each other. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, um, let's see. In season two, I don't think, th I can't think of any LGBT characters in season two. Like, I did a rundown of all the season two characters. I think all of them are, like, heterosexual, or at least heterosexual assumed. Um, you know, Alan and Anne from the Doom Tree, I, I, yeah, they seem like they were a couple, or at least were trying to be a couple. I don't know, it's crazy. Um, then you have the four sisters, the Negamoon sisters, or whatever you want to call them. Um, and they didn't seem like they were part of the LGBT crew. Um, I know, like, the oldest sister did have a boyfriend in Diamond's brother, Sapphire. They were, like, boyfriend and girlfriend for a minute. Um, Diamond was interested in, um, Sailor Moon, a.k.a. Neo Queen Serenity. And Emerald was interested in Diamond. Um, Sapphire had a love interest with um, Prisma. Um, Rubius, um, as far as I know, he didn't have a love interest, but I didn't really see anything about him being a homosexual, though, you know? So, hmm. And Wise Man, eh, I, 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 I kind of just. He, I guess he would be asexual at best. Maybe. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I didn't really. A wise man didn't have a love interest either. Rubius didn't have a love interest either. Although he did kind of play on um, the youngest sister, um, Catsy. He kind of played on her a little bit as far as like he knew that she was interested in him and he kind of played on that in order to kind of get him to do what he wanted her to do, you know? <clears throat> um, so yeah, I don't think there were any LGBTQ characters. LGBTQIA characters in season two. All right, so let's go to season three. All right, season three, of course, we have Amara and Michelle. Um, and that's pretty much like probably most of the people's favorite, you know, you know, LGBT like couple or, you know, like what you call it, like their favorite characters. <clears throat> as far as like the LGBT characters. And as far as the LGBT characters, um, definitely my favorite um, of the LGBT characters. Um, their relationship is in the anime is kind of ambiguous, but it's often hinted that they were a couple. The way they kind of like I know <clears throat> when Amar and Michelle first came on the scene, like um, Serena and Mina, Mina thought that Amara was a male, like a dude, because of how she dressed and you know her hair was short and whatnot. So they thought she was a dude, but she was really a female. But she does dress like a male, though. And she wears, like, you know, male clothing, um, you know, the male uniform of the school she attends. Um, her hair is cut short. Not that that's necessarily um, homosexual for a female. But it's kind of like one of those things that kind of, like, help create the image of it, you know? <clears throat> um... She's kind of interested in more masculine things, I guess, you know, like motorcycles and um, automobiles and, you know, things that are, you know, considered more masculine things. <clears throat> um, Michelle, on the other hand, is probably more so the, you know, plays the feminine role of their relationship. You know, she's more interested in 
well, you know, she's more interested in music. Not that that's um, feminine or anything, um, but she's more, seems like more so the feminine one of the relationship. <clears throat> and throughout the third season, you really get to see kind of like um, their relationship and how they feel about each other, you know? And I know like during an intense scene, when um, Amara assumed that Michelle had died because her crystal heart was stolen and it revealed it to be the um, one of the crystal treasures or talisman. Um, they did a flashback in, of them and they were like holding each other's hands or whatever and doing some like, um, kind of like some weird hand holding thing that was, seems a little sexual. <clears throat> Um, but I kind of like that, you know, I kind of like their, um, the love that they have for each other, you know? Um, what more can I say about them? Um, even though they had a pact of not to go out go back and save each other, they still kind of broke the pact and just saved each other and, um... Um, but I think I've said all I have are all that I can say about Amara and Michelle at the moment. Um, so I guess I'll move on. And if I think of anything else, I'll jump back to them. All right, season four. Um, majority of the characters were pretty heterosexual, or at least assumed her heterosexual, um, except for Fisheye. Fisheye, I actually thought that Fisheye was a female in, when I seen the dubbed version, but then I'm like, oh, wow. When I was reading on it, I was like, oh, Fisheye is actually a male. And I was like, oh, whoa. <clears throat> Could have fooled me, you know? <clears throat> but yeah, Fisheye is probably 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 the first like you know transgendered character perhaps. Um because Fisheye does seem to assume a female gender role and gender identity, despite being a male. You know, the way like it's not like say you know, Amara, where it's like, okay, she just kind of dresses masculine, but you know she's a woman, but she just is dressing masculine. And with Fish Eye, it's like, he really assumed a female role. So he would be more, maybe more so transgender versus, say, Amara, who probably would just be considered, you know, just um, a masculine lesbian. <clears throat> um, but yeah, like, Fish Eye would kind of like just clothe himself in female clothing and even kind of even tried to pursue a, a relationship with um, Darian at one point, I think, too. Um, which is just even more strange. Um, well, I guess it's not necessarily strange, but whatever. <clears throat> but when I seen it, I was assumed that fish eye was female not male but i'm like oh oh like okay this this like i have to go back and look at everything now but um yeah um fish eye probably played a somewhat pivotal role in the anime version uh because he did help um revive salem moon um when her like the monster of the day wind up doing some attack and while Chris, while Sailor Moon's um, dream mirror was out, the attack shattered her dream mirror and she wound up collapsing on the floor. Thus kind of like showing like maybe she kind of like lost her life when that happened or at least lost her spirit when that happened or her spirit was broken when that happened. But, um, you know, Fish Eye knew that like, I guess there's a lot more to the story than just that, but, you know, the main, the main enemy or the main henchmen, um, like, they were tired of the um, Amazon Trio's failures, so they sent that monster of the day to not only destroy, you know, you know, to basically destroy them, you know, the Amazon Trio. But um, 
Fish Eye knew the identity of Sailor Moon and even knew who um, Pegasus was hiding, whose dreams Pegasus was hiding in as well. So he did know all information, but when they kind of casted the Amazon trio aside, he decided to, I guess, pretty much keep that information to himself and not help the, you know, help the bad guys out because they're trying to get rid of them now. So it's like, hey, what, what are we doing here now? <clears throat> um, so he instead helped Sailor Moon and um, Sailor Moon and her friends to support, destroy the monster and they are able to kind of like become humans or something like that. My bad. I'm not the best at storytelling. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, last but not least, we got the fifth season. All right, so the fifth season, um, we have the Starlights. The Starlights are males when they are in their civilian form, but when they turn into their sailor form, they are considered, well, they are females, which is kind of like, I think that might be the first time I've seen like a transgendered, you know, superhero, perhaps. <clears throat> And like the English version of that was never dubbed. There's no English version of the fifth and final season of Sailor Moon. However, Viz is supposed to be doing one. However, I don't think it's been released yet. But I have seen bits and pieces here and there, you know, episodes here and there of the Japanese version and of the Spanish language version as well. So I'm familiar with them. And <clears throat> I think that the reason that they did that for the anime is because originally the rule was that only females could be sailors you know sailor soldiers but the anime version kind of like used you know the gender swapping or gender switching or gender bending as a loophole <clears throat> and um also a lot of the plot kind of revolves around one of the starlights having you know feelings for serena too <clears throat> So, I think for the English version, it was kind of really difficult to do a dub of this version. <clears throat> um, or of the season, of the fifth and final season. Um, because because of that and a lot of other things in, this, um, in the fifth season as well. You know, like the Nehalania clones that were nude. Sid Moon being nude during the final battle. The Starlight switching genders. Uh, um, Sailor Moon... Well, Serena and uh, one of, uh, you know, Sailor Starfighter, I don't know his name exactly, but Sailor Starfighter and Sailor Moon having like a sort of a romantic type of vibe going on as well. Kind of like, it's kind of strange to kind of like, you know, deal with all that for like a teenage audience, you know, especially during like the 90s when censorship, censorship was extremely heavy when it came to the kids or kids shows. And Sailor Moon was marketed as a kids' show, um, even though it's probably more so a young adult show in Japan, maybe. <clears throat> but yep, yeah, that's my take. I guess those are what I'm saying, or my rundown of the LGBTQIA characters in Sailor Moon. So, what do you think? Did I miss something? Feel free to let me know. Feel free to comment, feel free to subscribe, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Your feedback and support are extremely appreciated and extremely valued. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.